For real? Hi everybody, welcome to Knowledge on Tap. I'm Vince Canarozzo, with me today is Brandon George. A little bit later on, Steve Tamino will be joining us. We're coming to you live from the showroom at OptiPro Systems, your solution for machine tools and everything Mastercam. So just to tell you guys a little bit about Knowledge on Tap, it's a new series that we're creating here at OptiPro where we're gonna showcase both Mastercam and machine tools. So what we wanna do is each episode either feature a new tool path or a new design feature in Mastercam, and then come right down here in our showroom and show you guys live on a machine how it works, tips and tricks about it, and everything like that. Yeah, today we're gonna to show you a couple things. We're gonna show you a feature called Rast to the Vector, and we're gonna show you a five axis tool path called Project Curves. With Rast to the Vector, this uh, feature's been around for a while. A uh, good place to use it where you could take a picture and you could actually turn it into cuttable geometry. So for instance, if your customer has their logo and there's no geometry that exists for it, you could import it into Mastercam, turn it into geometry, and then go ahead and cut yeah, it. And now exactly. we'll go through it right now. Brandon will show us how to do it, and then you'll have that one. Cool. Let's do it. So let's jump right onto my computer here. So what we've done is I just went on Google Images and found a picture that we're going to play around with on our machine. So this picture is a joke. It's the evolution of man with the robot being there at the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to go right into Mastercam 2021. And I'm in my wireframe tab here is where I'm gonna find raster to vector. So raster to vector is right here in our shapes. So if I go ahead and click on raster to vector, the first thing it asks me to do is, well, what image is it that we wanna use in Mastercam? So I'm gonna select this image that we have. And now we have a few parameter pages that we're gonna go through here. So this first page is really just making the image as crisp as you can, really making sure that you're gonna get nice dark lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and darken my image a little bit. So with this feature, what we found out that using a black and white image will work best for you. And not to say you can't use a color image, that's, that's not true, you can do it, but because it's looking for light and dark, you might have some voids in the geometry once it's created. So yeah, yeah that's it, you'll exactly. see that. So this next parameter page is really just, what do I wanna create in the raster to vector? So I'm gonna say, I wanna create the outlines of this picture and I'm gonna optimize what do I want to create? I want to create my fine lines and arcs and my accuracy with raster to vector. I always just use fine. It works the best by far. So once I green check here, what you're going to see is the geometry is now being created from that picture. So it's created 141 lines and 173 arcs with a tolerance of about two thousands. So if I green check, we can go ahead and take a look at what we've created. So it's put everything on a new level, level 255 and it's made 314 new entities. So we can look and see these entities that's created now can be utilized as anything like a tool path or usable geometry. Right, and that's uh, what we're gonna do. You could go ahead and take your scriber and you can go around the outline of that. You could pocket it out in the middle. You could put surfaces on it. And uh, actually we're gonna use it for the next demonstration when we do the project the curves. We're actually gonna cut these features around the sphere. Yeah. In there, and we're going to use that with the Project the Curves toolpath. You want to jump right into the Project yeah, let's Curves? Go, go right into it. So I've got another Mastercam file loaded up here. And what this file is, is I've mocked it up how it is in the machine. So behind us is a five axis robo drill with a coma table. And we have this sphere that we've just epoxied right onto a fixture. And if you take a look at that level 255, it's going to have all of that same geometry that we had from the raster to vector. But what I've done is I've manipulated that geometry by scaling it. I had to roll it around this ball. I had to figure out the circumference of that diameter to really get it so that all of those little figurines looked evenly around that surface. So like Vince said, the toolpath we're going to utilize today is going to be a multi-axis project curve. So project curves, when it comes to five axis tool paths, it's a great one to start out with if you're just getting into multi-axis. It's, it's very easy to do, and I would compare it to being like a contour. It's a contour tool path with five axis capability built into it. So you could use it a bunch of different situations, like we're gonna use it to you know engrave around this sphere. You could use it for picking out corners. You could use it for getting into tight places. 
and uh, it's like I said, it's very easy to do, and we're going to go through the steps right now to engrave around this sphere. Yeah, exactly. So just like any toolpath in Mastercam, first thing you do is always create your tool and your tool assembly. So I've just created an engraved tool. We have this mocked up in the machine on an ER20, and I have my correct projection height of 1.2 inches. Let's go through the cut parameters on here. Sure. So uh, once we get in there, we get into the parameters, what we're going to ask for is, they're asking for what is the projection? What do we want to project? So we want to take our wireframe we created from our picture with the raster to vector. And Brandon just does a quick window select and it selects everything for us. Yeah, so it's pretty awesome that in, in one window select, I can select all 14 of those shims. Yeah, it's great. So then we just go in and say, what do you want to project it onto? And we're going to pick the surface and or surfaces in some cases that we want to put it to. So we select the sphere around there. And you notice that there's another box up there for max you know, like projection distance. So what this is, you're telling the system just how far away the curves are from the surface or surfaces that you want to project onto. So if they were beyond the distance that you had put in there, they would not project onto the onto the surface and you would have to increase that value that, that's all that box yeah so we just used a, a random value of two inches because i know that those curves are within two inches from that sphere so the larger the number you put in there really the the more curves you're going to encompass right. on there and, and you'll then, see it once it writes the tool path that they've been missing yeah yeah you would and then the last thing i'm going to do here is i'm just going to give it a value of how deep do we want that tool to engrave into that surface so i'm just going to say a negative value of five thousands and the last thing here is my my center of the tool i don't want any tool compensation or anything like that the next controlling point when we want to do with multi-axis we want to control our output and our tool axis control so we have a five axis machine we want to use all five of them so we're going to say to come on out we want to come out in five axis capability we're also going to connect our tool and we're going to select surface for our tool axis. And what this is telling the system is that we want the tool to stay perpendicular to the surface at all times. So with that selected, it will do that and maintain that orientation throughout the tool path that will cause the tilts and rotaries to react in that way. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things you can notice if, if you guys didn't see that. In a multi-axis toolpath, you also have the ability to do three, four, and five axis. So right, this a is lot a of people thing. don't know, you know, that these multi-axis toolpaths can be utilized in a three-axis machine. Right. So those of you who have the multi-axis package, you can take advantage of that and use those strategies for your three-axis toolpaths. Yeah. We'll be getting into more of that in some later shows to show you just how to do that. Definitely. Yeah. Our collision control, we don't need any of that here. We're not going to hit anything. And then the last thing I'm going to do in this tool path is I'm just going to define my rapid distance for my entry and exit. And those distances can be controlled down here in the bottom right. I know point eight's going to work, so we don't need to change anything there. Let's go ahead and take a look right at our tool path. So if I turn off my curves, we can really kind of zoom in here and see what's going on with this tool path. So all of those blue lines in Mastercam means that it's now cutting. So your blue, your blue lines in Mastercam are really your G1 geometry. So all around this sphere, we're now engraving. And what's great is we actually have this set up here in our machine simulation. So we've taken this, this Fanuc RoboDrill and we've taken that Coma table and now integrated it into a full machine simulation. So machine simulation comes with Mastercam and it comes with some you know, some loaded machines already. Uh, we didn't have that one, so we acquired the models that we needed, then built it and imported it into the system. Uh, those of you who are out there that have five axis machines and have access to your models, that's great. Uh, if you want to put them in the system, give us a call and we'll tell you the steps that you need to take to integrate it into your Mastercam. Yeah, so let's take a look at what's going on here in Machine Sim. So obviously, like we said, here's our robo drill. I can turn on the machine housing if I want to see the sheet metal. Not really necessary right now, so I'm gonna hide the sheet metal. But you can see here's our five axis table that's gonna tilt about B and spin around C. And we can go ahead and slow this down to make sure that all of those rotary motions are gonna work correctly here for our tool path. So using machine simulation is giving you a very accurate representation of what's going to happen once it goes out to the machine. 
you know, you can check, you know, if you had clamps in the way, all of that can be imported into the mock sim and you can use that all for collision checking or whatnot. It, it's really nice. It gives you that sense of confidence yeah. when you get out there. And if anything were to happen, it, it would show up in red or it would give and us an alarm stop. that said, yep. you know, there's a collision, be aware. Right. So I think we're ready at this point. Why don't we go over to the machine and actually watch this demo run? Yeah, we're actually going to run it. So we'll invite Steve on over. Everybody, this is Steven Tomino. He's an application engineer here at OptiPro Systems. So Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about the machine? Well, hello, everybody. Um, so we have a robo drill here. It's a D21 medium bed um, robo drill. Uh, extremely reliable and fast machine. Uh, it's just a standard three axis machine. Um, however, OptiPro put a coma table on it and we turned it into a five axis solution, right? Um, so it has the FANUC 31i B5 control on it. <clears throat> that B5 designation tells us that we can control five axes simultaneously, right? Um, on top of that, OptiPro, again, put a full uh, package together. So we have a uh, Renishaw tool probe and tool setters, right? So the tool setter is gonna go and find the tool length of our, of our process, and the part probe is gonna find the location of where the part is. Mm -hmm. um, we've also installed some other five axis options. Um, we'll talk that, about that a little later. Um, but if people are just trying to get into five axis or they want to improve on their five axis, the robo drill is a, a really nice, flexible uh, solution for you guys. You know? I'll tell you what, in using a probe, one, once you have that, you get spoiled and you don't want to use a machine that doesn't have it. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> so uh, I'll start yeah. the yeah. demo and then uh, I'll talk about some of the options that uh, we're using in the demo. Yeah, I think the only thing different is uh, the tool that you're using. I didn't, I didn't really mock that up in Mastercam too well. So we're actually using a, a thin tip Sharpie marker. Um, and this is a really good way to prove your process because uh, we're not wasting any scrap on material and we're also uh, not wasting any tool life, right? Um, so it's a really nice way to show the motion of the, 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 the part in the program and what's actually going to happen. Um, and again, if that Sharpie breaks, you're out a couple bucks yeah. versus a couple hundred right. bucks, you know? So <laughs> uh, I'll start up the demo and yeah. we'll start talking about that. Great. Well, so we're using a, an option called TCP, uh, Tool Center Point Control, right? In the FANUC world, it's G43.4. Um, so what is TCP really? Uh, so instead of all your coordinates coming from home positions, they're actually being derived from the tool tip. Right? And there's some benefits about this. Um, better uh, tool life, uh, better surface finishes. Um, you actually have increased cycle time, I mean, I'm sorry, faster cycle times. Uh, and overall, it's a lot easier to read and program, right? Um, so with, with this solution, all these things together, um, you get a really nice um, product, you know? Right, so at TCP or RTCP, as it's sometimes called, the, the thing to remember with that is that it's forcing all the axes, rotary and linear, to arrive at a program point at the same time. And that, that's the main reason. That's why you're able to achieve faster cycle times, better surface finishes, and you know better tool life, just because that's, that's simply what's happening. So to add on that, TCP also converts the feed rates, okay? So in linear motion, we're typically in inches per minute. Um, for rotary motion, you, you're most likely uh, in degrees per minute. So TCP automatically converts the degrees per minute into inches per minute, and again, it makes it easier for somebody to read and program. That's right? awesome. That's great. Yeah, what else oh, is man, really thanks. cool is, you know, making the toolpath a master cam, doing the full machine simulation so we have a good idea of what's going on, but when it comes to actually running out of the machine, the post-processor is really the most important part. Absolutely. So uh, we brought in one of Mastercam's top post writers, and uh, I got to work with him and it was, it was awesome because he knew exactly what the post needed, I knew exactly what the, the FANUC RoboDrill needed, and, and we came together to create this uh, wonderful post. Um, and it was awesome because we could debug all the tool paths right here on the floor. So it was a really efficient use of our time, um, and the end result is a really nice solution for the customer. Definitely, because one of the great. cool things specifically here is about that B axis, right? Right, so this uh, coma table can only travel uh, 107 forward and negative 17. So the post automatically forces the tool motion to the direction um, most open for the travels of the machine. You know? So it's yeah. always an over travel. That's great. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, really that's cool. cool. Thanks, Steve. Great, thank Absolutely. you, Steve. Awesome, man. Thank you, everybody, for joining our first episode of Knowledge on Tap. One of the things, this is really 
critical that we're trying to do is every month come out with this. So if you guys could like, subscribe, and even comment below what you would want to see in any of our videos. While we have this multi-axis machine on our floor, we're really going to kind of specialize in new multi-axis tool paths and stuff like that. Right. That'd be a good thing to do. You know, another thing that we're going to do uh, with the release of 2022 on the horizon, like coming out uh, June 1st, we really want to showcase some of the new features that are coming out with the software you know from what i hear they're like complete game changing things or i'll even get crazy like life changing changes <laughs> that are going to happen out there i put that plug in there for the master camp people watching but anyway you know well you know it's saint patrick's day so we might as well make it official all right we're done for the toast. day right yeah we're done <laughs> yeah that's it so happy saint patrick's day everybody and thanks for joining us here on knowledge on tap Cheers. Great. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Thank you.